Welcome back, English nerds, to the Craft of Writing series. I'm your host, Miss Nash, aka Nashy, and today we will be looking at A Home in Fiction by Geraldine Brooks. Geraldine Brooks is an Australian American author who was born in the 1950s. Uh, she had a career as a journalist uh, before turning to fiction and non fiction writing. Her novels partly or are partly informed by the coverage that she wrote about in certain war zones in the Middle East, uh, Africa and the Balkans, I think, for memory. Brooke's first novel, Year of Wonders, was an international bestseller, as was her novel Caleb's Crossing and People of the Book. And in 2006, she was awarded the prestigious Pulitzer Prize in fiction for her novel March, which is a reimagining of the Louisa May Alcott story, uh, Little Women, which is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful text. And if you get a chance, you should definitely read it. A Home in Fiction is a speech slash lecture that was delivered by Brooks as part of the 2011 Boyer Lecture Series. Now, the Boyer Lecture Series is a series of four lectures given by a prominent Australian each year. And Brooks was looking at the concept of home in her series. And the fourth lecture within that series is called A Home in Fiction. In the speech, Brooks uh, describes her career as a writer, initially as a journalist, and then is pinpointing the moment when she perceives herself to have become a writer of fiction. And she indicates that at the time she was unaware that she was undergoing this change within herself. And she outlines the creative processes as to when she moved from journalist to a writer of fiction. And because she's looking back on that process of, of who she was as a writer and how she has become a fictitious writer now, we can look at A Home in Fiction as a reflective text. It is also discursive in the sense that she discusses the, the ideas and the thoughts behind the creative process, but for her it's a reflection on her writing evolution and thus for I'm going to be looking at A Home in Fiction through the lens of reflective. So let's just break down what the structure of a reflective text looks like and what, what's included. In terms of the voice that is used within reflective writing, it is usually uh, personal, direct and first person. It can be, reflective can be a blog entry, diary, letter, memoir, speeches, lectures, eulogies, monologues. Uh, explanations where the rationale for language choices is explored. So anything where personal opinion is is uh, an ability or you have the ability to discuss a personal opinion. The purpose of reflective texts are usually to, to contemplate or to consider, uh, to muse, to dwell on in order to deepen an understanding. So reflective texts will have us articulating our learning um, the, the process and the growth that comes, the shifts, the changes and the transformations that come with new experiences, learning things, our thoughts and feelings on perspectives. And often reflective texts require us to look at the past and how changes have been made between past and present. The tone of a reflective text is usually uh, a considerate tone or it's meditative or, or thoughtful, reflective um, and the audience can be anything depending on the medium that you've chosen. So if it's a diary entry, usually that's for, for one's own self. If it's a lecture, it would be for public consumption. Um, you know, if it's a eulogy in the paper or something like that, it, it might be an unknown audience. But the audience is really open in terms of who you could be ref referring your reflection to. Um, but in a holistic sense, a reflection needs to look at the fact that you are considering transformation in something. So your personal opinion is at the forefront of the reflection. In the HSC, there is a very real possibility that you will be asked to look at reflective texts or to write reflectively. So we will be breaking down this a little bit further throughout our study of craft of writing, but really look at the the aspects of a home in fiction is, is a great place to start if you are trying to understand reflective writing. Okay, so breaking down the text further, we already know that it's a reflective slash discursive type of writing, and we talked about the fact that it's a, a lecture form or a speech, but the purpose and ideas explored in the text, there's a few of them. So first of all, Brooks is saying that fiction has its origins in fact, um, and she further explains what she means 
by that through the use of the anecdote uh, with the mathematician. So we'll talk a, a little bit more about that in later slides. Brooks also explores the power and value of fiction. Um, she mentions that authors are often in search of the truth when they are writing and that sharing the voices of the past is her calling for writing fiction. Brooks firmly expresses her belief in the power and reach of fiction writing, particularly when communicating what she regards as eternal truths and facts. Her motivation is summed up when she says, I try to use the experiences that I have had to make the suffering I witnessed count for something. I believe fiction matters. I know it has power. I know this because the jailers and des despots are always afraid of it. Everything she says is just so powerful. So how do we know her text is reflective? Well, we broke down the elements of a reflective text in the previous slide. And if you read through her work, you'll notice that she has used first person and it's a very conversational tone. Um, she uses evaluative language and declarative sentences. And many of the language features that we would expect to find in work where we are reflecting on something. So she uses um, anecdotes, metaphors, tricolons, imagery, uh, turning up sentences to create that tone of contemplation and reflection. And if you aren't sure what a tricolon is, please jump back on the mini lesson episode that I have posted up for tricolon. I think it's mini lesson three. That will help you to understand the purpose of tricolon in reflective writing. Okay, so if you haven't read A Home in Fiction yet, I would like you now to pause the video, open up your work booklets and read through the lecture. Um, the lecture transcript. I have also popped in the link if you want to view or listen to the lecture and you just go to ABC Net Radio and the lecture will be there for you. Okay, welcome back. So now that you've read or listened to the lecture, I want you to start thinking about identifying the elements of reflection within the text. And to do that, I think the easiest way to work out if a text is reflective and how it's being reflective is by breaking it down into four easy steps. First, looking backwards, inwards, outward, forward. So how does Brooks look backwards? What, does Brooke, what has Brooks written in the past and how did it help her prepare for writing fiction? Then inwards, why does she write fiction? What is she trying to achieve? Then looking outward, who is her audience? How has her works now been shaped by her experiences? And then looking forward. Where to next? What does Brooks still have to learn? What does she hope to do? In your workbooks, um, I want you to write your answers to the above um, using statements from Brooks's lecture. Okay, super awesome English nerds. I'm going to turn this into a part one and part two series because it is going a little bit longer. So uh, please tune in for the second part of A Home in Fiction where we analyse some of the key quotes and we look at reflective writing a little bit further. Thank you. Bye.